All right, we are live. I am Josh from PhotographyTipsHQ.com. I've got with me David Johnston from Roundtable Photography, correct? Photography Roundtable. There we go. See, I knew I'd screw something up, but hey, it's out of the <laughs> way now, so we can. It only took ten this. seconds. It only took ten seconds. We've had a little bit of technical difficulties, but uh, but I think we are ready to rock and roll. Um, I want to give people a few minutes just to just to kind of get in here. So uh, we are doing this live, and uh, if you're seeing this after the fact, well, we're just gonna spend a couple minutes getting to know David and kind of um, find out what he's what he's been up to, and what his uh, what his site's about. So, David, real quick, why don't you uh, why don't you go ahead and just share? Uh, a little bit about that. Sure, man. Yeah, I run the website and podcast called Photography Roundtable. And just recently, well, I, I guess from the beginning, I'll start there. We did the uh, articles every day, just posting about photography stuff. And um, just everything that goes from portraits to landscapes to wildlife to sports photography, all that, uh, something new every day. And then started doing the podcast and uh, interviewing some professional photographers. You yourself have been on the show, so that was a good show. And um, then just recently, we've started uh, releasing classes. The first class that we released is the Lightroom class, and we're working on the landscape photography class uh, right now. And, and also, we just recently uh, released some workshops that we have up uh, in the Smoky Mountains this year. So uh, people can go to photographyroundtable.com slash workshops and find those as well. So what are we, 28 days into 2015 and I'm already exhausted? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. You've only got like, uh, you know, 11 more months to go. <laughs> I know. Oh, I really started everything too fast too soon. But it's good. It's it's fun. I, I'm really loving what I'm doing, so I'm having a good time. Very cool. Very cool. Well, we got a we got a handful of uh, of people watching, so we just want to say welcome to you guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by, and uh, let's go ahead and let's let's dig into this. We're gonna talk uh, Lightroom workflow, correct? Absolutely. So. What we're going to do is, I've actually not looked at any of these photos. Uh, I took some photos tonight, actually, before I came on, of some sunsets that were going on uh, around my house. So I haven't looked at any of these, which could be extremely dangerous. But it also gives you a great look at the entire workflow of Lightroom. So um, I'm basically just going to start from the very beginning. So right now, uh, you see my import screen up. Uh, you can see all the photos that I uh, that I have imported and that I haven't imported. So all the ones that are visible and not grayed out or or not checked, those are the ones I have imported, like these right here. Um, and then the ones visible and checked are the ones that have not been imported. And you can do a lot of things. Uh, on import when you're bringing them in and what the great thing about Lightroom is is it organizes all your photos for you so since I'm bringing these in it's automatically going to put them in a 2015 folder and then it'll separate those by days so it goes down uh, to the very day that you took the photos which is so easy uh, for you to navigate through Lightroom and find different things that you're going through uh, there's a lot of file handling, uh, renaming that you can do before you import. You can also use uh, uh, different presets when you import. But usually what I do is I just import them right away, uh, just bring them on in. And you'll see this going on right here. So you'll see copy and import photos, and it'll start bringing those in. And I know this is very, very basic stuff, um, but when we start getting into selecting photos and which photo I'm going to use to, to actually go through an edit workflow, um, that's going to be when you're going to start to learn a lot of the tips uh, that go on with Lightroom and, and some of the really good strategies you can use to enhance your photography. So Lightroom is, is really, really good at taking your photos from being good and kind of like a, a a good photographer, like you know your compositions, people can tell what you can do, 
And then Lightroom takes them to the next level. So Lightroom, I like to say Lightroom takes your photos from good to great or from living room to art gallery. So you can take these uh, photos, like all these that are coming in in the import process don't really look great uh, so far, but there are so many tools that you can use in Lightroom to make them better. So go. while that's uh, while that's uh, uploading, I got I just got one quick question for you. Yeah, and, go for it. Uh, was that basically the default setting then for uh, importing? That it's it organizes it by by month, date, year, that kind of thing. Yes, it'll automatically do that. So if you see over here on the left side of my screen, you'll see the folders tab. Um, you'll see down here the 2015 folder. It'll automatically know that my computer imports fo oh, imports pictures into the uh, pictures folder on my user's screen. So then it'll automatically set those as 2015 photos. And then you can see down here it has separated everything that I've shot in 2015 into each day. Um, I kind of wish it would go down to like each hour. That would be really helpful since I do multiple shoots in one day sometimes. But going uh, going by the day is also really helpful as well. Okay, and that's a little different than the way I do it. I typically just take that that current job that I'm on, or right. let's say I have a number of jobs. I will just uh, I'll just say August Raws, and then I'll throw everything in there, and I might do subfolders myself. But that's pretty cool that it will, that it will, uh, you know, just do it for you automatically. I think that's probably how I used to do it before. But then I would lose track of the date. Like, go, I'd have to go through every one of those days to, uh, to try to locate certain pictures. So I got, I got, I got annoyed by that. Oh uh, yeah, I definitely understand that for sure. So another great thing that you can do, like like you were saying, is you can separate those into folders that you know where they are. So say I knew I had a 2015 folder and I wanted to separate those out and I wanted to just add, click on the 2015 tab and click on add subfolder and I wanted to name this landscapes. So I go ahead and create that and it'll automatically create a landscapes folder down there. And I mean, I could even keep creating subfolders. So if I knew the ones I wanted to edit, I could choose an edit subfolder. And then even under the edit, I could add a subfolder and say finished JPEGs and add those as well. So everything is broken down by folders. Uh, it's very well organized, I think. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I absolutely love using Lightroom. So it looks like, do you have any other questions, Josh, before we keep going? No, man, I think that's excellent. Now, we do have a few more viewers, so I just want to say, hey, what's up to you guys? And uh, uh, I think at the end here, if you guys stick around, we will do a, we'll take a couple of questions from you. So. Absolutely, yeah, I'd love to. And I've also got a, um, a discount code to give everyone at the end, too, for 20 bucks off. If you want the Lightroom course, uh, I can tell you where to find that. And I mean, 20 bucks in your pocket, that's not bad either. Um, so going through here, I'll, I'll select some out of these, uh, since these look a little better than some of my other ones that I was taking uh, today. So a great way that I like to organize these, I like to make them full screen or as much as I can. And then I'll just scroll through them once through. And as I'm going through these photos, I can immediately start to pick out some of the ones that I like better than others. So I can see this one. Uh, I like the color in the sky a little better in this one than some of the earlier ones. So one of the best things that I know to do to uh, get those over by themselves so that I know I want to edit those later is while I'm scrolling through, I'll just hit the one, two, three, four, or five keys and that will automatically rate those photos. So if I hit the one key, I know that, you know, I like that photo pretty good. Uh, it's, it's got some good color in it. Uh, this one I like a little better. I might hit a three to rate that a three. And then just continue to scroll through. If I don't like a photo, I'll just immediately pass over it. I think that's the one I'm going to stick with, though. So going through, and you can see the star ratings down here at the bottom. 
And to get those singled out by themselves, you can go up here to the filters. So you have a lot of different filters, and what we used was the rating system. So there's a lot of different systems you can use, flagging, uh, rated or unrated, but I like to use the rated because that works best. So it automatically eliminate the ones that weren't rated. And since this one was my highest star count, uh, I can bring that in. Double click on that and we can start viewing. And I will actually pull this down to my edit folder since this is in my 2015 landscapes. So automatically, I'm done with the other ones. I, I don't want to mess with them anymore since this is the one I want to work on. So I have it in the edit folder by itself. And since all that boring stuff is out of the way and getting started with Lightroom, now we can start uh, doing some Lightroom tricks going on and making this photo a little bit better. I know that's why everyone's here in the first place. Right on, man. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see if your technique is different than mine, and I'm excited to see what I'm going to learn here, too. So, Josh, do you, while this is loading up, do you usually bring all your photos in and edit them the same day, or do you wait around a little bit? Um, it kind of depends. Like, I remember when I first got Lightroom 5, I was like... <laughs> I was like super excited and so like I, I had just done a shoot and I brought them in and, and I was spending hours like l like no joke hours getting these photos edited and uh, by the time I was done the entire family looked like mannequins like they had I had soft <laughs> skin and like it looked like they had makeup on that like the dude had makeup on and he didn't have makeup on you know and uh, and and I stared at it for so long that I don't do that anymore like if I find myself staring at one photo for uh, you know too long, I'm I'll take a break because uh, you know I just you you stop seeing the flaws. Base, I mean at least I do. So, um, but but a lot of times if I'm doing like let's just say like a like a wedding like the like the reception that kind of stuff, there's not going to be a ton of work in those, right? And so it's kind of like hit the hit the hit the one that has similar exposure settings and everything to to the rest of them and then it's just a sink and walk away you know yeah absolutely and presets are great for those situations too absolutely um, alright so it looks like everything's loaded up pretty nicely uh, so let's start the editing workflow so the first thing I like to do is I like to come to the basics tab up here and by the way if you aren't aware we're in the develop module right now so if you go to the basics tab uh, you see a lot of what Lightroom calls sliders. So you have a lot of different things you can do. Color, black and white. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to keep this one color. Uh, then you have temperature. You can either make a photo warmer or cooler. Tint. You can change the tint. I actually like those in this photo, so I'm going to keep those where they are. I was using a graduated uh, neutral density filter while I was shooting this today, so you can see some more detail in the sky and some more color, and a little bit more light down here in the foreground than you normally would if I was shooting without a graduated ND filter. So right now, for editing purpose, uh, I'm going to leave those where they are, but just know that you can come in here and change the exposure uh, on these photos. But I'm going to leave that at zero. What I like to do with a lot of my landscapes is uh, add a lot of some contrast in there. I don't want to go overboard because, uh, like Josh was talking about, sometimes you can get way too into it and make everything look fake. Like he was making mannequins, and uh, you can come in here and I mean, you can play with a lot of stuff. Highlights, um, you can bring those down quite a ways. That's going to bring down uh, where the sun's reflecting in the clouds play with those a little bit. I actually don't like messing too much with the sliders just because it kind of messes with the color as well. But since the foreground is so dark in this image, I might increase the shadows just a little bit. But whites and blacks, uh, I'm going to leave the same too. Clarity, I like clarity in my landscapes. Some people say it makes them look a little too HDR-ish, but if you don't do a lot, it still looks pretty good. And then, of course, vibrance is how uh, bright those photo or those colors are going to look within the photo. So 
You can go crazy with those. You can actually bring it down all the way and make it almost black and white, or you can push it up all the way and make it look like a cartoon. Uh, but I like to keep them, you know, pretty steady. I like very subtle changes throughout the photograph so that you can tell some work has been done, but maybe not too much. So you can just go through. Saturations is going to add the depth to that color, so a lot more richness to a lot of the colors going on. And then the next tab you have is the tone curve. You can do a lot with the tone curve. This is probably one of the coolest features that I've found, is this little bullseye right here. So you can come through the photo after you click the bullseye and click on different things. So if I wanted this highlight and the sun to be a little less bright, I can click on that and actually pull it down with my mouse. And it'll pull the tone curve all the way down. And I can do that with pretty much anything within the photo. I can just come in here and drag. And if you'll watch the tone curve, uh, there's a lot of different things going on. So if I come in here, uh, Lightroom automatically recognizes that I'm in the shadows territory. If I come up here, it recognizes I'm in the highlights. Um, I'm actually going to bring that back to where it was, but I just wanted to show you guys that feature. That's one of my favorite features in Lightroom. That's something Photoshop has had for a long time, uh, but Lightroom, I don't think anything before Lightroom 5 had that. Um, I might be wrong on that, but I just didn't find it until uh, Lightroom 5. And then all these, the hues, saturations, and luminance sliders, uh, I go into those pretty in detail uh, in the Lightroom course, but just since there aren't a lot of color variations within this photo, you know, there's some blues, uh, reds, and then yellows and oranges down here. You can mess with those a little bit. Like, I might want the blue to look a little more teal. Uh, bring that down some, maybe to minus 17. Keep that there. And then uh, you can change around saturations of, of very specific colors. So even if you wanted to make this photo completely black and white, except for one color, you could come down here and set all of these to black and white or to zero saturation, and you have just the blues showing up. So you can do some really creative things with the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders. They're really good for singling out different colors within a photograph, um, but they're also really good for increasing a lot of the photos throughout the photograph, or colors, I might say. Um, so there are different things you can do. Luminance in this one, uh, so there are some blues down here that aren't really very bright, and the, these blues up in the sky look a little dull as well. So one way you can fix that is using luminance in a photo and luminance in a color. So I can pull that blue up, make it a little bit brighter, and not make it so dull looking or so dark. Um, I usually never touch split toning. Detail is something I use all the time just because if you're shooting in low light situations, there's a lot of noise going around. So this is the screen where you see a close up of the photo and you can actually click this little box here. And if I wanted to view this corner down here, since this is the biggest part of the photo, that zoomed in really, really, uh, really close to the lens that I was using, a wide angle lens. You can see the noise in there, and you can actually move this noise reduction slider up and reduce some of the noise in that photo. You know, noise comes out a lot when you're shooting in low light situations, and uh, being able to reduce those in Lightroom, especially with some night photography shots, um, looks it it even makes it look natural. If you go too high, I could see where it starts to look fake, um, but you know, keeping it natural is all is all what we're trying to do here. And then I always like to add a little vignette to my photos, especially if I'm using a wide angle. It just darkens those corners just a little bit. I'll pull it all the way down so you can see the full effect, but you never want to go down that far just because it looks really weird. So that's basically a very <laughs> brief overview of all the sliders. Um, so then let's get into using some of the tools. So first off, we have the crop tool. Uh, crop tool is really good just for reframing everything. 
I wish this was a little closer to the lens when I was shooting, but I couldn't get everything in focus. I was trying to use uh, some good hyperfocal distance in there, but just zooming in with the crop uh, and reframing that photograph does really well. So that's your crop tool right there. You can do a lot of things in crop tool. You can actually uh, pull this and you know try to spin everything around, reframe everything, uh, which is really helpful if you're trying to eliminate, you know, if you're at a wedding reception or something and someone weird pops into the corner and photo bombs you, you can, you know, turn it a little ways and people think you're being creative and you're just actually uh, cutting out some guy who tried to photo bomb your your picture. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with these tools though as well. So this is your spot healing tool. And this is really great because like right here I notice we have this little stem that comes out uh, and it's just very minor things that go on in a photograph uh, that shouldn't be there. So this stem is one of those. And the spot healing tool is great because Lightroom will automatically select the same uh, shadows, tones, and colors, or try to at least, sometimes it messes up a little bit, and replace those so you can actually eliminate this little twig that's coming out uh, in the photo. All you have to do is click on it, and like I said, Lightroom will do its best. It has not done a good job this time of replacing that. I can just go over here and select my own. I can pull and drag that and select my own location. Uh, as well. So I can do that and it's like that twig never even existed and you can just pull a lot of different stuff out like if you had uh, a portrait shoot and, and someone you know had some blemishes on their face or something you could just zoom in go through and click all those spots and Lightroom's automatically going to pick uh, places to fill those in with. Although it didn't do a very good job with this. I uh, I did a I had a wedding one time and the um it was pouring down rain so we had to go inside a barn to shoot some of the formal stuff and yeah. there was this green slide in all of the pictures and one thing I, I found really useful was to click that uh, click that tool and just I outlined that slide and it it uh, and and filled that whole thing in and it it would replace it with just with the hay that was around it basically and it looked it ended up looking great. Oh, nice. Sometimes it doesn't do a very good job with those like bigger subjects, but that's really cool that it filled it in uh, with the hay. Yeah, and just I had always been in the habit of just clicking it as the circle and never, never going after any kind of bigger objects. I mean, you've got to mess with the feathering and the opacity and everything, but um, yeah, yeah, it'll do a good job. So, like he was saying, you can actually pull and drag and create lines uh, with the spot healing tool. And the feather is just how much on the edges it blends everything. So you can increase the feather and uh, do a good job with the blending and opacity to how much that uh, blends in. So like he was saying, you can actually click and drag and I can ask it to replace that entire line. Or if I wanted you know, this whole area, I could just color that in. And Lightroom, like it's doing right now, would do a terrible job at replacing that section. <laughs> so, like I said, the bigger subjects, you know, it might not do a great job, but some of the smaller ones, it does really, really well. And and the trick to the just doing like the circle and not painting like a full line across a photo is get the circle just big enough to cover whatever you're trying to conceal, uh, so that it uh, people can't notice as well as they could otherwise. And then. This right here is your red eye tool. Obviously, we don't need to use that in this photo, um, but it, it does do a pretty good job. It allows you, you know, to just come in here and click on people's red eyes, and it does a good job of eliminating uh, that red saturation in their eyes that looks uh, demon-like, I guess I could say. Um, and then this is one of my favorite tools right here. This is the gradient filter tool. So, like I was saying, I was shooting this with a graduated ND filter, but Lightroom has pretty much eliminated the need for graduated ND filters because you can actually come in and create one yourself. So, if you click on the uh, gradient filter tool, you can actually select what you want to change. So, I can come in here and say I want to change the temperature, 
at this corner and then drag the gradient tool across and it will actually fade to a different temperature at the bottom. But to show you how you can use it as a graduated ND filter, I'm going to click on Exposure. And I'm going to have the exposure all the way down just because I want to know exactly where I'm putting uh, this filter. I can just click at the top and drag this all the way down through the photograph. And then slowly increase the exposure on that to, you know, maybe minus 0.5. And it does a really good job of creating a this exact same effect you would in the field using a graduated ND filter. So even if you don't have an ND filter, uh, you can use Lightroom to do the exact same thing, create a lot of the similar effects. I actually liked what it did there, so I'm going to recreate that. Maybe that looked better than what I had. So get it back close to where it was, minus 0.5. And I'm actually going to make another one at the bottom. So if I stay on the gradient filter and hit new, it automatically selects a new one. And I'm going to pull up from the bottom and create one to do the opposite effect. And I'm going to brighten the foreground. I'm going to brighten it quite a bit down here, almost to one stop, and hit OK. And so we've made the sky darker, we've made the foreground lighter. So now what can we do? So many things you can do in Lightroom. So oh, let's go into the adjustment brush, another one of my favorite tools in Lightroom. We can actually come in here and paint color on things. So if you see on the log down here in the foreground, you have a little bit of light shining right on the tip of this log, and then right down here on the very bottom. So I'm going to select color from the effects. And you can actually do so much stuff with the adjustment brush. You can do color, uh, defringe. You can increase some clarity in very specific spots. You can do exposure like we did on the gradient filter. You can even, like Josh was saying, you can soften skin. You can whiten teeth. Um, you know, if you go to the dentist, that's a $100 procedure to whiten your teeth, but you can do it on Lightroom for free if you have it. So you can come down here and select color, and then you have this whole color palette that you can select from. So I'm going to stick with this pale orange that we have just because that matches. It's a good match for this color and the highlights right here on the log. You can come down here and select that. Uh, I do want my feather all the way up. So the feather, like I was saying before, is how much it blends that uh, into the surrounding area. So if I have the feather all the way down, you're just going to see a line of that color that we did. But if I have the feather all the way up, it blends it into the surrounding areas where I paint that on. And then flow is another good thing to use. So flow is if I have it all the way up to 100 and I go over the same area twice with the adjustment brush, um, it's going to put like another layer of adjustment brush on top of that. So if you don't want that, keep the flow pretty low. And that way, when you go over another area again, um, it's not going to make that color stand out more like it would if you had the flow all the way up. So these are just really subtle changes that we're doing. So you can start to paint these areas uh, of highlighted, highlighted from the sun that we had. It's just this tip of the log down here. Maybe go down here to the very end. Just making those areas a little bit brighter, making the lighting in this photograph a little bit more interesting. And I mean, even if you wanted to, you come up here and start to add some of that to the clouds. But it's very predominant down here, especially on the end of the log, uh, right in the foreground. You can also increase the size of that brush, too. Like if you had a whole color that you wanted to do across the sky, you could just make it huge, click and drag, and you're done. You don't have to use a tiny brush all the time. But I like to keep mine pretty small just because I like to make very small changes to the photograph. And I think, well, let's do a uh, lens correction. So a lot of the times if I'm shooting into the sun or something, you get this hazy look on the tree.
haze down here. So you get a lot of this pixelated hazy look down here. A one way to slightly improve that is if you click remove chromatic aberration. It does a pretty good job of uh, removing kind of like that double photo look that some of the less expensive lenses use. Just because I still use some of my less expensive lenses uh, sometimes, just because sometimes they act better than some of my more expensive lenses, and uh, I'm not really worried about, like in this instance, if I dropped it in a lake, I wouldn't be too mad that I dropped it. And I think that's pretty much it, what I want to do with this photo. Like I said, very subtle changes that I want to make. I actually do see one more thing I want to do. I always do this in Lightroom where I come back and see something else that I want to change. So I'm going to do another color uh, adjustment brush. I'm just going to make this a little bit more red uh, right down here, right on the horizon line. Just paint that on a little bit. If you paint it on and you're not getting this, the same color that you want, you can actually come back over to the color palette and make it richer if you select this slider and pull that up, you can see that it made that color that we painted on a little bit darker. So I can move that and you can see the changes that it's making to the photo. So make that a little bit darker of a red. Then hit done. And let's see what the changes were as we went through. So as you can see in the photo on the right, uh, versus the before photo that was on the left, we added um, a little bit more of a shadowing to the sky, made that darker. We added red down here. We still have some blown out areas where the sun was. And then the foreground, we made that a lot lighter, added a lot of contrast and clarity to that to make all the details stand out. Added some blues down here and these wood chips and then added the highlights down here, and then of course the vignette uh, on the very edges. So this is just a, like, this is a, you know, decently uh, composed photo with not a lot of good color in it. This is a decently composed photo with good color that light do. So that's just a very quick run through of everything you can do in Lightroom and, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. So if anyone has any questions, I guess we can roll with those. Yeah, I'll get those. Uh, I'll get those going right now. As, uh, as this thing's opening up, what, um, what, what's, the, what's the course have to offer? Kind of break it down for us. So the course is broken down into 30 episodes, and it's a completely downloadable course. Um, so you can go to my, my website. If you go to photographyroundtable.com slash Lightroom, you can actually find that course there, and I'll give you like a video intro to it and everything. But the first 13 episodes are all about the tools of Lightroom, or first 17, excuse me, all about the tools of Lightroom, uh, you know, how you can use those, how you can use sharpening, uh, importing, exporting, creating presets, all that stuff, all the tools on their individual cells. That I'll go, I'll break those down in the first 17 episodes. Then the last 13 are complete workflows, like we just went through. So, if uh, it, it, it'll take you from import to export on all those photos and show you everything that I do on a lot of the photos that I bring in and uh, work on in Lightroom. And some of them, like this one, are some photos that I've never seen before that I just go through and make quick changes and instantly improve those photos uh, for you to work on. And it's a really hands-on course too. So every lesson that goes from import to export, you get a corresponding photograph that's the exact same photo that I'm working on. So you can go through it as well and make the exact same changes um, as I'm going through and making them. So it's a very hands-on experience. Uh, just because I'm a hands-on learner, I felt that uh, would be a really good way for people to learn. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I don't know what happened, man. We've got technical difficulties at the beginning and a little bit at the end here, but for some reason, it will not let me turn on the questions. So, oh, oh. if 
if anybody has any questions, I can uh, save it for you. Um, how, uh, how, how, how long have you been working with Lightroom? I have been working with Lightroom probably for about four years. So it's been my main uh, editing tool to use since I think I got it when it was on Lightroom 2. Uh, so it's been a while since I've been using it. There have been so many great improvements that Lightroom has done. Um, a, a lot of really fun stuff that Lightroom has done. And, uh, you know, there's just so many tools that they've added. They've almost made it a replacement, like a cheaper replacement for Photoshop, uh, for people who haven't been able to use Photoshop as much. And then now, of course, with the Creative Cloud, um, you can pay, what is it, I think $9.99 a month with tax. It comes out to $10.91 $10 a month. Uh, and you get Lightroom, Photoshop, and then all free uh, upgrades to those things as well. So I, I use Creative Cloud just because it's, it's really beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do the same thing. I do the entire suite just so I can edit video and everything else. So, um, well, hey, man, it doesn't look like uh, it doesn't look like we got anybody asking questions there. So, if you guys do end up free, what's your Twitter handle? Do what now? You're breaking up there a little bit. Oh, you gotta love the internet, man. What? Uh, go ahead and give us your Twitter handle. Sure. My Twitter handle is at David J. Art, and you can reach me there and ask me any questions there. Oh, and the uh, discount code, if you guys want to use that for 20 bucks off, you can type in uh, HANGOUT in all caps, all one word, and you'll get 20 bucks off if you decide to make that purchase. Awesome. And I'll make sure uh, this, this whole thing will be up on YouTube, and I'll make sure to include a link to the, uh, to the product and the coupon code as well. Awesome. That'd be great, man. All right, buddy. Well, thanks so much, and uh, you have a good night. All right. Signing off.